Georgia Tech has a proud football history. They have four claimed national titles and the largest margin of victory in a single game of any team ever. While most of their accolades came during a bygone era, they've remained a respectable program. Notably as a team that far outperformed their academically restricted recruiting rankings through the use of Paul Johnson's flexbone offense. However, you would know none of this if you watched what former head coach Jeff Collins did to this team. While he's kept the defense at a respectable level as a defensively minded coach, his offenses have hamstrung the Yellow Jackets. Collins and his offensive coordinator at the time, Dave Pattonaud, took a team with mobile quarterbacks, a stable of talented running backs, including current Heisman candidate Jameer Gibbs, and an offensive line who is much better at run blocking than pass blocking, and proceeded to install an offense that's never been over 50th percentile in run percentage. And the thing is, all of these attributes remain true for Georgia Tech, but it still doesn't feel like their offense has a solid identity. Their quarterback Jeff Sims is a really solid athlete who struggles with consistency in the passing game. Generally, they like going to this fade out play where he reads this corner, and if he drops with the fade, then the quarterback takes the easy completion with the out. They'll also try this pick running back wheel a few times a game. The single receiver here runs inside to try to slow down the trailing linebacker in man coverage. This is a play to watch out for because it's been effective in FSU's last couple of games. FSU's been forced to give the freshman AZ Thomas significant playing time at corner, and on this play, his job is to pass up the wide receiver so he can peel off onto the running back. If Georgia Tech wants to move the ball effectively, they'll have to give looks like this to confuse the young secondary. Georgia Tech will also run a fair amount of screens to help get the passing game going. Once they're able to get some single coverage, they've occasionally been able to push the ball downfield to 6'7 receiver EJ Jenkins. However, their offense is at its best when it's running the football. Sims is always a threat to pull the ball on read options. I like this inverted read, where he's reading the defensive end on the opposite side from the running back. Since he freezes at the running back heading his direction, Sims pulls the ball for a big gain. But when you struggle throwing the ball consistently, it means the defense can load the box against the run. This is where Georgia Tech needs to get creative with their run game. I like this little pitch to get their stud running back Hassan Hall out in space, and generally think that misdirection plays like this reverse should be more of a staple in their offense. However, their offense has been without Sims recently, and it's unclear whether he will return for the FSU game. Against Virginia, the game seemed a little fast for their backup Zach Gibson, and his indecisiveness led him to take a lot of sacks. Plus, it means that the run game, which is really the only thing going for them offensively, lost its most dynamic piece. Now let's talk defense. Georgia Tech wants to play aggressively. They blitz a lot, and they tend to play a lot of man behind it. Choosing to blitz on 66% of man coverage snaps compared to 23% of zone snaps. This aggressiveness can pay off with negative plays and turnovers. I especially like their linebackers, who do a really solid job of stuffing up interior runs so FSU will have to prove they can break the pressure early. I like for FSU to lean on its outside zone running game that's been successful against NC State and Clemson. Outside zone can take advantage of Georgia Tech's downhill thumping linebackers by beating them to the edge. Once they force Georgia Tech to respect the outside zone, it opens up shot plays off the boot play action. And it can even open up huge running lanes for FSU's quarterback Jordan Travis. Once Georgia Tech's pressure is broken, they tend to fall back into spot drop or what I call country zone defense. This is the truest form of zone, where defenders find a spot to defend and keep their eyes on the backfield. This is the zone defense you often see in Madden games. These zones can be beat by competent quarterbacks who can reliably hit the gaps between the defenders, but it makes up for it due to its stoutness against the run and its tendency to result in turnovers for the defense. Since defenders have their eyes on the quarterback, if they're just a little late with their reads, it means the defender is in prime position for a pick. And this is likely what Tech will have to lean on if it hopes to beat Florida State. Tech has already been able to win games against arguably better opponents by dominating the turnover margin, and lately the Seminoles have been particularly mistake prone. Now there's very little on paper that shows Georgia Tech should win this game, especially with Sims being nicked up. However, no one is immune from coastal chaos. FSU has lost three straight, but if it can clean up the mistakes, this is a great opportunity for it to get back on track. Thanks for watching. If you're a Georgia Tech fan, make sure to let me know how I did in the comments below. If you're a Florida State fan, make sure to like and subscribe and check out Knowles247 for more great FSU news and information. Thanks.